Welcome to episode three. In this video, man, we're going to deep dive into things you need to know about Keeper. Um, if you watched my last video, you guys seen that I went over a lot of different options when it comes to what software you guys needed um, in you guys' business, right? We went over Keeper, we went over Seller Amp, I talked about online jobs, I talked about having an Amazon Seller Pro subscription, right? And one of the questions I got from someone is, okay, what, what is the most important software we need to start? And in 92% in of everyone's business, Keeper is the most important tool you're going to need, right? Outside of that Amazon Seller Pro subscription, you're going to need that in order to enroll in FBA and things like that. Um, but outside of that, the most important thing you're going to need is going to be the Keeper software tool. Keeper is going to allow us to understand how often the item sells, at what price points does this, does this item sell? And you guys know in my business, I sell a lot of used items. So oftentimes I'm able to make educated decisions and guesses on if I should buy an item based on Keeper and what it tells me, right? It lets me know, hey, Charles, over the last 90 to 180 days, this item is sold at this price point. Um, Amazon Prime sellers have sold it at this price point. So now I'm able to use that data um, and plug it into a software like Seller Amp and say, hey, Based on the 35% return on investment, what is the best, uh, what is the maximum buy cost I should be buying this item for, right? And now that plugs it out to me. And now I know as I'm sourcing, I can now source more efficiently because now I can look at it and say, okay, based on this item and based on this data, I should be buying this item no more than $55 per unit. So now I can just hurry up and skim through um, the, the output of searches to say, hey, okay, I can buy this. You know, let me vet this item, let me vet the seller, make sure it fits my criteria. But based on the price point, let me go ahead and buy it, right? So that's the power of Keeper. Um, but other than that, man, welcome to episode three. We're gonna get right into this video, straight to the point. Um, like I said, welcome to the video. All right, so um, I got two examples pulled up here, man. Um, two free leads, honestly, for somebody that's really serious about trying to um, get into the game. If you want to just kind of understand how this thing works, I got two free leads here pulled up for you. Both of these things, both of these items are units that I've sold in the past uh, when I was kind of just lingering on the Amazon FBA space and trying to figure out if this thing works. Just proof of concept, right? So I think these are two reasonable items that if you guys can sell, um, will be something somewhere to start, somewhere for you to kind of have a proof of concept. You may want to, for someone that's ready to take initiative, um, you can purchase these items um, and potentially see if it works um, and, and kind of go from there. So let's jump to my screen. Perfect. All right. So I got my screen pulled up here, man. And as you guys can see, here's the first item that I'm going to talk about. This is the Sony SLV D380P. This is a DVD VCR combo. And as you guys can kind of see, this is how I have my setup. Uh, set up on my screen. You can see I got seller amp and you can see I got keeper right now If you guys need an in-depth video about what keeper is I'm definitely going to go ahead and link the video um, I, I, I put out a video a while ago man Just kind of going in depth as far as what keeper is how to read it and things like that So that will be step one if you have no idea what keeper is I don't want to make this video about that. So I'll link that video above man. Go check that out 35 40 minutes of course, it's gonna take some time, but after you watch that video, I feel you will have a very good understanding and a foundation of how to potentially read and, and vet items. But let's let's uh, use this video um, under the assumption that you understand the basics of Keeper, right? So when I look at this when I look at this item, I'll give you guys the three three or four main points I look at when I'm vetting an item, right? So Sony SLV D38 300P, it's a DVD VCR combo, and now I can sit here and see what I see here is. Um, let's take a look. I'll try to put that by box views. I see that. So what I see here is number one, I'm looking, I see over time, this used seller offer count has dropped over time. What that tells me is that this item does sell used, right? Also what I can see here in this uh, rank category is the highest peak this thing has had is 205 in electronics, right? So I see over this time, there was no sales here, which caused that sales rank to steadily go up. But since then, I've seen multiple sales, right? So I can see one, two, three, four, five, right? I can count. I've seen multiple sales and I see that used seller count going down, right? 
that new offer count stands steady. So what I'll do is potentially I'll take a little bit more of a deep dive here. And what I typically do is go to data. Shout out to Echo Flips, man. If you watch this video, you actually put me on game to, to another trick as well. So what I've been doing since I uh, spoke with him, man, is I go to data and I go to that offers tab, right? And now what I'm doing is taking a look at this offers tab. I want to read this data to see what price points um, are items selling at. So for example, I only sell, I sell 95% new. I mean, I'm sorry, 95% used. So what I do is go to that data. I go to that offers tab and then I'll unclick new. And now I'm only looking at what price points that these used items sell at, right? So I can see here that we have 163.99 So three of the over the last 30 days, three has sold at 163.99, two has sold at 192, and one sold at 152. Now, of course, there are two different conditions. You got used very good and you got used good. But the first thing that stands out in my mind is none of these are prime sellers right that prime that prime section here is not clicked uh messed up that prime section here is not clicked right so i, I shouldn't have did that but you can sit here and see over the last 30 days three two and one so it sold six times no prime sellers right so now what i would do is say okay hmm if i was to buy this i know that i potentially based on the condition can spike that price point up to about 10 about 10 percent so my view is very good. Instead of it being 192, I would try to sell it about 204, 205. My use good, 163 and 152, I'm looking at trying to sell it at 175, 179, 99, right? That's how I would look at that and see, right? Then what I want to do is I'll look at those. If you guys don't know, Keepa actually came out with a used buy box statistic a few, I think it was a couple weeks ago. But now you can even take a deeper dive into this data and see what price point is getting that used buy box, right? Now we see 152, 139, and 160 has kind of gotten a little bit of that buy box uh, rotation. But once again, this is used good. So of course, the buy box is going to all if as long as you're not overpricing your items, right? You're gonna might you might be able to get if you can find a good condition, use very good or use like new, you might be able to sell this thing for 179.99, right? And I, I would try it at that. And of course, my overpriced would kick in to make sure I'm getting the best best bang for my buck. But that's what I would look at, right? So first and foremost, I'm going to that data. I'm going to that offers tab. And this is where I'm going to make a lot of my buying decisions at, right? Six is sold over the last 30 days. In that 30 days, 163, 192, 152, 90. Those are the three price points that are sold, right? And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to just take another, another look, I'm sorry, at the product details, right? And you can kind of see used over the last 180 days is, of course it's, it's kind of been fluctuating but here i look at this right here used like new once again that's not that's not a good snapshot currently let's take a look 130 130 hmm and then i see that sales rank hovers around a hundred thousand so one thing i want to take a look at too and see how many new sellers has been on this there's been no new sellers, so it wouldn't make sense. To, um, let's take a look. Six times, 152, 192, 163. That makes sense to me. So what I'm going to now do, what I do when I look at this and how I use Keepa, of course, if you guys looked at my, my previous Keepa sourcing uh, methods, what I'm going to now do is press that eBay tab right here. And now, based off the data that I just used, and I'm giving you guys exactly what I do in my business. This is the exact thing I do. Um, now that I know I might be trying to sell this thing for me, honestly, based off what I read and I, I don't put that much thought into it. Of course, I look at some of the things I'm looking at this and let's just say based on the condition, 152, 163, so I might 169.99 or 179.99. So based on the condition, those are two price points I have in my head, right? So let's say just off the, let's just say we use, look at use good. Let's say I want to do 169.99. I think that'd be a good starting price point now seller amp is telling me hey based off your criteria you want to buy this thing for no more than 99 dollars so now what i would do is press that ebay tab and i'm going to go here right I, I promise you guys this is verbatim step by step of what i do right i'm going to go ahead here and i'm going to scroll down i'm going to set some filters up in ebay so first and foremost i only want to look at items that are sold in the u.s only secondly i'm going to look at only use condition Thirdly, what I'm going to do is seller amp told me maximum cost should be 99.20. So I'm going to go here 
and I'm gonna put my max cost as 99.20. But what I'll do is 100 bucks even, so that way I, can, I might can make an offer or whatnot, right? So now I got those three filters, but look at that. We got 70 results right now. 70 results of items we can potentially buy. And now what you have to do is go through and vet and make sure, right? I wanna look at the pictures. I wanna look at the description, right? Some of these are for parts only, so you can kinda see parts only. I don't want that, right? So now I can see it says test it working. When it comes to selling DVDs and VCR players, I try to look for almost a complete set. So I wanna make sure, number one, I can get a remote, right? Um, so I see this says, please see description. Let's see what this says. It says the VHS is working with the DVD would not work. No. So I wouldn't buy that. Right. And two tricks you can do. Number one, you can go through each listing and vet to see which one comes with an almost complete set as far as a remote and it's working. Or I can go in here and buy one for $30 and then go ahead and source me a, a remote that comes with it, right? And I'll show you guys both of those op both of those options. But first and foremost, let's see if we can find one um, right here. This makes sense to me. Ah, but it's 60, $67 in shipping. That's amazing. So you can see right here, it comes with some, some, some uh, Kodak uh, cassette tapes or whatever it is. Uh, RCA cables, $53.99. $67 in shipping. That is amazing to me. Fully tested and works. Come with cables in the VHS you see picture. Some minor scratches. Boom, right? So I would look at this, but it doesn't come with a remote. So I would probably pass on this anyway. But man, $67 in shipping. That's amazing. Here's one right here. It comes with remote. So Sony SLV D300P comes with the remote, right? So I'll take a look at this. Um, I kind of see some description of it. Let's zoom in. I like that. So I see it's selling for $89 plus $29 um, in shipping. So what I'll do, just for the sake of showing you guys what I do, um, 89 plus 29. 118. So I'm over I'm 18 bucks over. So what I would do potentially on this is make an offer but here's one that i potentially would buy let's keep going to see if we see another one dvd part not working i want one that's working all right so what i could potentially do here is look up for the remote so i'll type that in right there and let's just take a look as you guys can see this comes with the remote but it's still over our, over our price point um, here's a remote right here for 10 bucks, 16 bucks, right? So potentially what we can do is two options. Um, here's another one, 12 bucks, 10 bucks. So now we know we could buy a remote for 10 to 10 to 15 bucks. What I would do potentially as well is I would source through here because we know that we need to be buying this item for no more than $100 to make this a profitable item, right? So right, what I can potentially do is I'll go through and figure out also outside of figuring out if it's a complete set with the remote, I'll go through and look and see which one has a good condition um, that I can potentially buy separate and then get that remote shipped in. And now I can piece this together and sell it as, as, as a VCR with, a, with, the, with the, uh, the remote, right? So a lot of these are for, for parts only, um, but that's how we do that, right? So I like this one right here. Um, this right here will make sense to me. I'll look at this. I see he has great reviews, 98% feedback. I would make an offer here. Um, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make an offer. Probably I need to be at least seven, I need to be $18 cheaper. So I'll probably make this uh, offer for 70 bucks just to kind of see where he at, where he's at. If I can get this for 70 bucks plus the shipping, I'm in business, right? And I don't think that's completely absurd to think. Um, but that's what I would do here on this item right and then just to kind of coincide with this video let's move on to the second item right here we have what's called a rs surfboard pulled up right 24 by 8 cable modem this is an, this is another free lead for you guys so if you guys like this lead go look at it and see what you can do i found this from the keep up product finder just like in my previous videos so definitely go take a look at that what i would do is the same thing so when i first look at this item i see that amazon is on the listing now, of course, in my business model, I'm not worried about Amazon being on the listing because I sell used. 
I don't care. I want Amazon to be on the listing because that means this thing is get, is getting a lot of eyes um, viewing it. So that means more potential volume for for this listing. So I would do the same exact thing, man. And the crazy thing about it, y'all, is I don't put that much thought into it, man. When I first started this business, I would sit here, man, and look at this item for for 10, 20, 30 minutes, just observing, trying to figure out everything, right? Thinking that you're missing something out, missing out on something. But the, 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 the real the real thing is I'm just buying the data, man. So what I'm gonna go, gonna do here, man, is I'm gonna go to the same thing. I'm gonna do data. I'm gonna go to the offers tab. And what I wanna do is see how often is a used item selling. Take a look at this, man. 299 times in the last 30 days has this item sold. Of course, it's been sold by Amazon Warehouse. So that's a you know a difficult thing to see. I mean, not difficult, but we could potentially think, buy this. It's at $80.87. They sold it 225 times. 69.44 use acceptable. So I'm gonna try to find me a used good or used very good one and see if I can sell it for that price point of 80 bucks and 87 cents. Nothing is nothing is wrong with that to me, right? So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna press that eBay tab, and based on me looking at this, I I, I just can, I just know like I know this thing sells. It's just the seller price. I mean the seller count went up slightly, but I know it's gonna sell, right? And at the end of the day, with my repricer in place, I know I'm a hundred percent certain. I, I can tell you guys with certainty, at least in my business, I have not lost a dollar on an item just yet. I've broke even on some items, but I've learned not to buy them. And the only time I've broken even is when I went extremely deep on an item, buying seven or eight or nine, ten units. When I buy two to three units of an item, I have I've, the worst I've done was make a couple bucks profit. But the best I've done is make hundreds of bucks profit. So I just look at it differently when I'm in here sourcing it. I don't look at it as, as, as rocket science. I just look at it as I'm trying to what I'm trying to do, the way I got my business set up with my repricer. When I send these items in, I'm trying to sell as fast as I can for as much as I can. I'm not looking to hold no item for 10 days, eight days, two, three weeks. I know we, we look at the, the month and say a 30 day rolling period, man. I want my items to sell within within 72 hours of a checking in. I'm I'm pricing aggressively. Now I'm not killing the, the used buy box, right? Because one thing people would do is kill that buy box. But the, what I'm gonna do if I have to is match that buy box on the used side and, and make sure I get that sale as fast as I can. That's the name of my business. I want to turn my money as fast as I can. So that's how I look at this, man. So when I when I'm looking at this, I see that used uh, offer count has went up slightly, but it's starting to go back down. Of course, we're in Q4, so sales are going to be uh, spiked. But based on this, 255 times at 80 bucks. So what I'm going to do is try to find me a used good one um, or used very good one. I'm going to say if I sold this, let's just say if I sold this for 79, let's just say 80 bucks to match Amazon. Let's just go ahead and do that. 80 bucks. I need to be buying this item for at least $47.51. I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to press that eBay tab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here. I'm going to filter this by used. I need to be buying this for how much? Forty-seven fifty-one. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Go down. I got it in use. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do fifty because I might can make an offer or two on, on a couple items. Look, I got ten results. I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna click U.S. only. And perfect. Now I got a couple of results. And just like that, here's one right here that automatically catches my eye. And I'm really gonna buy this right now on the spot while I'm with y'all. Right, forty-nine ninety-nine. I'm a couple bucks over, um, but let's say if I bought this for $49.99, <clears throat> just like that, my I, I got my ROI set to 30%, but $14 profit, cash on cash return is fine with me. I'm I'm spending 50 to make 14 potentially back. I'm fine with that. And just to be safe, I got a few more. You got cheaper ones in here that come without the without the complete set. All the time when I'm looking at items, it always catches my eye when I see it come in the original box or everything. Like this one right here is fine. Like I would, you can potentially buy this one as well. This this makes some sense, right? Twenty seven ninety five plus twelve oh five, that makes sense. This, this to me is a used, good or used very good potentially, right? Typically, like new is all is everything's in the package, right? So I, I stay away from like new. I'm always I'm always making my uh, my listings either very good or good. I never really do like new that much. I learned from that, I learned from that experience. I try to make sure it's just very good at the at the most. But this is a good or very good item right here. It comes with you know a, a, a power source. It comes with a unit. It comes with the manual uh, cable. To me. It comes with a different model, model, uh, model modem box. So they're going to put it in a different box. Ah, so I would say this is a good, this is good. I wouldn't really put that as very good. Let me see if I can find a different one. Um, 
let's take a look. So we got three so far. It's this one right here. Please contact your email. Okay. That has nothing to do with me. Here's another one, right? This is a very good or good good unit, right? Forty five ninety eight free shipping. It's right in my or I can make an offer, right? Oftentimes, what I try to do, what I used to do, man, is when I found an item and it, it allowed me to make an offer, bro, I'd be trying to make, a, a, you know, offers all day. But the way I look at it now is based on my criteria in Seller Amp. If Seller Amp tells me my max buy cost is 50 bucks, I'm not about to keep wasting my time making offers, fighting back and forth. Now, you're fighting for a couple extra bucks, which is cool. Um, but in this instance, 14 bucks versus 17 bucks is fine. But man, I'm just gonna buy it and get it over with, right? My, my, the name of my game is leveraging what I have. I wanna leverage the money I have to make, to churn it as fast as I can. I'm not gonna waste my time doing that. Um, but 45.98, so let's take a look. And this is, that's probably a better one than the previous one, 45.98. I'm making 18 bucks profit, 39% return on investment. Right here, just like that, y'all, it's two free leads, man. And that's how I use Keepa. And I know I'm. this is almost like everything you need to know about Keepa. And sometimes, some of y'all might feel like I didn't go that much in depth, but to be honest with you, man, if you can just understand those three things, and like I said, I'm going to link uh, uh, my my Keeper in depth kind of video where I go an hour in depth as far as understanding the the sales you know, the sales rank and you know use a seller account, new seller account, going to track the product, going into the data and looking at over 90 days how often has it sold. That's one thing that you guys do want to take a look at me. I base, I keep it simple. I keep it simple, short, and to the point. I go to data, offers tab, how many times has it sold as a used item over the last 30 days? 299. So if it sold 299 times over the last 30 days, do we think over the next 30 it's gonna go to zero? I don't think so, right? Do we think it might It might take a dip because it's Q4. It might go from 299 to 150, 199. I'm still going, I know I'm gonna get a sale. I'm not gonna overcomplicate that part. I just know that that's gonna happen. I've been doing this for a few months that I, I, I've i put my reps in, I've bought things. I know that's gonna work, right? So 225 times at 80 bucks, I'll, I know that I might my repricer is gonna be right there. My repricer might beat that, by, match that or beat that. Based on my buying, based on my buying uh, price point, it's going to match or beat that, right? So now I'm going to go in here and say, look, forty-five ninety-eight. Um, I'm making eighteen bucks and seventeen cents, thirty-nine percent return on investment. I'm going to go ahead and buy that, right? And that's how I have my business set up, right? So these are what I call singles. These are things you're going to look at and say, this is a single, right? This is one item that I can take a look and say, I might be able to sell this three or four times a month. Or I might be able to sell it 10 times a month. You never really know, right? If I can sell this 10 times, it's a couple hundred bucks in profit. If I can sell it, you know, five or few, five times, maybe a hundred bucks in profit. But if I can build up my store of items like this that sells three to five times consecutively for a consistent amount of profit per, what, did it, what does your business look like? What would my business look like when I finally get to the price point? I mean, get to the point of having 20, 30, 40 of these in replenishables, right? And that's the mindset I've been having in this series. And that's kind of, that's kind of why I wanted to start this series is because I truly think that over time, since I put my previous reps in, I kind of understand the game a little bit, right? It's not about those home runs. It's just about those consistent replenishable items that I can source three, five times a month, built my built up uh, a, a spreadsheet of 20, 30, 40 of those, have a few home runs and just keep churning. And I think that's the that's the that's the point um, I'm trying to get to and I'm fighting to get to over the next 60 to 90 days. And I think I'm gonna get there, man. But in this video, man, this is episode three. This is how I use Keepa. This is how I vet. A lot of y'all want to understand and find out how um, I know if an item is going to sell or not. And that's exactly what I do. And that's how I do it, man. Episode four is going to be coming out shortly, man. I apologize to all y'all that I've been just in a little hiatus, man, with work and everything has been extremely busy, but I, I'm trying to get to the point where I start uploading these videos at least twice a week. I still, every day, still in the background, try to work on the business as far as what I do um, and trying to build this thing up. I still have the deadline of trying to get 10K net by February, um, but I'm going to do a better job of making sure that I at least continue to record my progress and record what I, what I do, right? So... I appreciate all the support, man. If you guys haven't done so, man, please like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think about the video, man. A lot of this stuff, 
I do off the dome, man. I, I don't script. I don't think about it. I just come in and just do what's on my mind. So any questions, any comments, concerns, constructive criticism, like always, man, leave it below. Uh, follow me on Instagram, man. I'm going to be posting more content there. Shoot your DMs. I've had several DMs from a lot of y'all just introducing yourselves, man, telling me you appreciate everything, and it, it means so much to me, man. Let's continue to build this community, build the channel, man, and, and I'll talk to y'all in the next episode.